up the UK from leaving their entire regime? Oh, of course. In fact, I, I wrote about this yesterday. Not just uh, not just Draghi, who's pretty much, I said, you know, he led it out of the bag, what they're discussing in their meetings, because they know very well it's likely to happen. Uh, but also the vice chancellor, meaning the number two guy, you know, like it's the equivalent of the vice president in Germany, admitted this week that it's very possible that the uh, European Union will break up. So believe me, the powers that be know this is this is a possibility, and they certainly know after not just the Brexit, but the, the Italian referendum, which was, I think it was like 65% to 35%, the Catalonian secession and the Trump vote. So they, they know the writing's on the wall, but yeah, they're going to fight a tooth and nail. And I was writing this morning about the, uh, you know, this, this uh, Supreme Court of the UK blocking it and saying uh, the parliament has to vote for it. And I said that, you know, they pulled in Alexis Cyprus, remember when last year, Greece yes. voted oxy. They said, we want no bailouts. And he said, even though you voted me in for, for just uh, to avoid the bailouts, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, I don't think the UK is anything like Greece. And I have a feeling that if, while they will try to delay it as far as possible, if they dare try to go against the will of that very proud people, I think you're going to see some real political and and, uh, and probably monetary revolution in that part of the world. But yeah, of course, they're going to fight it to the death. They 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 could they couldn't believe they lost the election uh, to Trump, and uh, and they you know they'll fight in every way possible to prevent him from ending their their Game of Thrones. But eventually they're going to lose. What's the uh, fallout from all of this? So uh, let's say the UK they go ahead and they push Article Fifty through. They vote to leave, and we know you know Italy, France, and the rest of the countries. Like you said, it's going to break apart. I mean, isn't this going to have a ripple effect throughout? I mean, Europe and then the U.S., Canada. What are the, what's the fallout from all this? Uh, well, look, you know, I've said this year is going to be the year of money printing and draconian government actions and monetary revolution. The fallout is, you know, last year was last year was was the awakening. That's when we first saw the votes. We first saw that the people are going to fight back. Uh, and be, first, it was the, actually the Catalonian secession vote was the first one at the end of 2015, and then the Brexit, and the Italian referendum, and the Trump. Uh, so, you know, it's 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 where the world is realizing the, the powers that be are realizing and the people are realizing uh, that there's a, a popular uprising which won't be quenched. And, um, you know, it's really, you know, the fallout is that the, the powers that be fight to the death and they lose. And it's kind of like, you know, you look at the market, quote, the, what, the quote market reaction to the Trump. Remember, we spent all, all summer with, well, if we need if Trump wins. It's horrible for stocks and it's and it's great for gold. And. You know, because they knew Hillary was going to win, and that's how they kind of set up the rigging. And then when it, and then when it didn't happen, they kind of tried to double up their efforts. Like, wow, we really miscalculated. Okay, we got to create this Trumpflation meme, and that means that's what well, you know, stocks go up and gold goes down, and and everything is great. And you know, buying them a little more time, and so they could figure out their next plan. But you know, that that meme is going to die too. And uh, I think it's going to be very apparent in not so long of a period of time that there's nothing different about the Trump world as far as the outlook for the U.S. economy than there was with the Hillary world. I mean, probably would be at World War III with Hillary by now, but nothing is going to change. He's not going to be able to change anything. And as a result, you know, this this last ditch effort to prevent the popular realization that nothing has changed is, is going to die on the vine, just like all of their other attempts uh, to change reality with rigged markets. So you mentioned Trump and Trump is out there doing many different things right off the bat here. And do you do you think we're going to see a lot of truth bombs? Like, do you think we're going to start seeing real statistical information coming from the government like unemployment, GDP? Do you think the rigging of the stock market's going to stop? Do you think the precious metals rigging is going to stop under Trump? Do you think any of that's going to happen? No, I don't think. Well, the bring the precious metals market is going to end when so when demand overcomes supply, it'll, I mean, it'll never end. There's no, there's no administration that's going to be like, yeah, let's let the, let's let the true nature of um, reality come in, which would be, you know, um, actual economic data showing a recession and actual stock markets collapsing and and the bond vigilantes coming in and people buying gold because that's that's what will happen if they stop for for a second. And uh, Trump will Trump uh, on a personal basis is his leverage to this system with all his high end leverage real estate. As anyone out there, so there's he has. I mean, look at who he's appointed. All these Goldman Sachs people and billionaires. So no, he there he has no incentive to to drain the swamp. He in fact he hasn't done any of that. He's 
he definitely has some free market principles, which I appreciate, although I think a lot of them are misguided, like actually thinking he's going to bring manufacturing back here without uh, without causing trade and currencies wars and, of course, causing the price of, of goods for heavily indebted Americans to explode um, or, or repealing Obamacare with, and replacing with who knows what, because there's really no replacement at this time unless you're just going to take all the free insurance you just gave uh, and take it all back. Uh, so, yeah, look, I mean... He is not incentivized to make any changes in, in the rigging of markets, but the pressure because of all the changes that's going on, the fact that the economy continues to inexorably decline worldwide, that these political revolutions continue to expand, uh, that currencies continue to weaken and the volatility in, in financial markets continues to increase are only going to get, are only going to become more so, especially with him in, in office. So again, you know, He's going to try it. He's going to go all out trying to change things with, with sheer will, but he's going up against economic mother nature and the unstoppable tsunami reality. What we're seeing right now, Obama just left office. Now, the economy, we've been watching it. We know that a lot of the information is manipulated. Most likely we're in a recession right now. But what's very interesting about all this is that all the companies are laying off and, you know, retail is contracting, stores are closing. And all of a sudden, you know, we hear all these companies saying, oh, we're going to create 10,000 jobs here. IBM, as they're laying off, we're going to create 25,000 jobs. Walmart, as they're, you know, saying that retail is not going well, we're going to create 10,000 jobs. GM is out there saying we're going to be building, yes, manufacturing plants. How possibly can all this be done while the economy is in the shape that it's in? Is it possible? A lot of it is just public relations. First of all, IBM, I can't believe they said that. They've had they've been contracting the company for like a decade. They're a dinosaur. In fact, I think they they've had like declining revenues year over year for like what four straight years or something like that. And they, their debt has exploded, so they're definitely not. And uh, and Walmart just announced layoffs. And as for GM, they haven't announced any jobs. They just said we plan to build plants. But you know, they're all saying because Trump is all over them. I mean, it's just public public relations and. Frankly, it doesn't make any sense for them. I mean, he can go in there with all his bluster and say, yeah, we're going to make manufacturing. But the only way he can make manufacturing profitable is if he just prints a lot of money and gives subsidies to these companies. I mean, huge subsidies that are going to cause inflation. And even that, practically speaking, is probably not going to work. It would take years to do all that stuff. And of course, all our competitors overseas are going to devalue their currencies and make them even more competitive uh, against us. So... Again, he has a lot of bluster, but there's nothing they can do. And, you know, there's no one really. It's like uh, the uh, the guy at Alibaba, Jack Ma. Again, this is a Chinese company. What does he care about America? He meets with Trump for, for a half an hour and comes out and says, I'm going to create um, uh, 100,000 jobs. But he's not. He's just saying, yeah, I want to build Alibaba. And uh, I would like it so that people in America use it like they use eBay. Maybe some people will sell stuff on it. Like they, That's not creating jobs. It's all public relations BS. I mean, the fact is that it's uneconomic to create jobs in this country uh, right now. And uh, it's unlikely that that's ever going to change on a competitive basis unless, of course, Trump wants to do some massively, massively protectionist things, which, as we learned from the Great Depression, don't work. And, of course, they invite in a global world response. How, what about, how about that from people who have more cards in their hand, like better balance sheets and lower cost la labor? Than we do. So again, it's you know, there's only so much he can do by tweeting uh, to the world of how tough he is. What do you think uh, Trump is going to do with the dollar? I mean, the dollar is at all time highs right now, and I think we're for many months now that you know the value of the dollar is continually moving up. Do you think he's going to start devaluing the dollar? Well, I don't know how you would define that term all time high. If you look at the dollar index, the dollar index was 100. And 20 or 130 15 years ago, and it's 100 today. Of course, the dollar index is principally the euro uh, so and, and the yen. So two countries who are destroying their currencies and still haven't been able to make the, the dollar index uh, go to an all-time high. I would say, I would argue, though, that yes, maybe if you had a trade-weighted basket against all the second and third world countries that have been destroyed by this fiat paradigm, that they're all he hopelessly indebted and their currencies have been crashing, yeah, it, it probably is at an all-time high against many currencies, just not the major uh, currencies. Um, but look, Trump said what we all know. He said the dollar is too strong, and that's what's so ironic. He wants to bring jobs back to this country, 
And he's also trying to devalue the dollar at the same time, because that's, of course, going to invite everyone else to devalue at the same time. Um, so um, he said yesterday or last week, he said, I, I wrote an article right after the thermonuclear final currency war uh, has started when he said the dollar is too strong. He ended the strong dollar policy that's been going on 20 years, which simply means we say we have a strong dollar policy, but we don't do anything that, that makes it strong. Now he's admitting, look, we're getting killed in trade. We need to, to hurt the dollar. And Steve Mnuchin, who's going to probably be the Treasury Secretary, said it at his confirmation hearing yesterday, he said the dollar is, is uh, excessively too strong and it's, it's, it's bad for the country. So, yeah, he's going to put pressure on the Federal Reserve to keep rates down, not just because the dollar has to be weaker, but because... Uh, you know, as I said in my 2.5 percent enough said in a million other articles, rates cannot go up. It's that simple. Rates go up. That's that's the end of the world. That's the end of the the 20 trillion dollars of government debt and the hundreds of trillion dollars of all kinds of debt around the world. So, you know, he, he's he's kind of in a corner. He's, he's he he talks at one side of the mouth, and then you know, I want the strong, I want the weak dollar, but I want the jobs, and uh, you know, again, that you know, when you run into the reality that you can't do all these things. You know, uh, people see it. I mean, we're not going to have a replacing of Obamacare. We're not going to have all these jobs flooding back into the country. And if we did, then it would mean that the price of a car would be dramatically higher or we would have massive inflation from the money printing to subsidize them. Do you think that's what he wants? Do you think he wants massive inflation right now? The way he's doing this and he's setting everything up, do you think he has another plan in mind? Maybe to cause inflation, maybe to bring down the economy? Well, when you're in the 1%, right, or now it's the 0.1%, inflation is your friend. I mean, when you own, I mean, yes, to an extent, it becomes hyperinflation, of course, you know, that, that, that and the currency value just collapses. That's bad. But if you get what we've had before, where the money printing is just funneled into financial markets, uh, that's great for him. So he's happy. He thinks inflation is good, even though it hurts the majority of people. Uh, but he thinks if he does some populist protectionist things, to put, get a few jobs that they, that they won't notice what's going on. But, uh, but again, it's a trade-off. If you try to do these protectionist things, you're going to wind up causing inflation in another part of the economy and people are going to be upset about it. And of course, if you try to steal jobs with uh, uncompetitive uh, protectionist measures, you're going to invite response from Mexico, from China and from everyone else. It's not like they, I mean, again, they're the ones with the cards. Because while we uh, we can institute measures, they can institute measures too, and they are the ones that have the low cost labor in the first place. So they can you know they can take what we're doing and do it a lot more. You talked about rates, and the Fed said they're going to be looking at raising the rate three to four times in 2017. Do you even think that's a possibility? No, of course not. They said they were going to raise it four times last year. Yes, and they and the only and in fact they said it in January. And the only time they did it at the end of December was, well, one, because they had been able to goose the stock market at the end of the year enough that it gave them cushion because they wouldn't dare do it if the stock market wasn't wasn't rising. But also because in, in their own words, we need to preserve credibility um, as if they had any credibility left uh, because there was no reason to do that. I mean, the economic data has been terrible. It's, it was rolling over at the time, uh, let alone with the Trump, the uncertainty regarding it. Uh, but they did it because... They had, to, they had to desperately try to do it. They pushed the stock market as high as they can, manipulated markets as much as they can, and they held their breath, and they got away with it. But the fact is, interest rates have surged. In fact, they, actually, the other reason they did it was because rates had done so before, and they raised rates 25 points after the, the bond vigilantes had already raised them 75 points. So they kind of were just behind the curve. And if those 75 points have had a huge impact. You've seen an absolute plunge in uh, mortgage uh, applications and refinancing applications. I mean, God, you know, I just wrote an article the other day, uh, first first Trump, then Dudley, yelling next, because you had Bill Dudley, the president of, of the New York Fed, who's the second most important guy on the Fed, saying right after Trump's uh, weak dollar thing, we need people to start refinancing their houses and cashing out equity. I mean, you can't believe you're hearing this from, you know, from the monetary leaders. And how is that going to happen when you have when you have uh, refinancing activity has gone to nothing because of rising rates? Well, you do things to make rates go back down again. So again, you know, you got Trump, you got Dudley, you got Steve Mnuchin all talking about doing things that are going to make the dollar weaker. And of course, you have Janet Yellen, who if she wants to keep her job, not that I really think she has a chance, um, she certainly is going to have to help the cause. And also, if she raises rates, she's going to destroy the economy. I mean. When I wrote that in the article, 2.5% enough said, what I was saying was 
I had written back in, in early 2014 when you had the taper tantrum. I said I wrote 3% nubset and then 2.6% when rates were, were sitting around that level. I said rates can't go above this level. The economy will collapse. Well, here we are uh, three years later, and it looks like 2.5 is the level rates can't go above because no matter what, quote, good news they put out, rates are going down. They stop at 250 and they come right back down because anything higher is going to destroy what's left of the economy. So no, the Fed's not going to raise rates. They're insane. We're going to see the evidence of this. Re of this. I mean, look, we've been in a, 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 a supposed recovery for like, what, eight years now? Don't we ever have a recession, even though, we, of course, we are in one. But eventually the reality is going to hit, especially once all this, uh, you know, the Obama administration spent $500 billion in the last four or five months of the year trying to get Hillary elected. And, you know, the, that, that money, you know, that, that's going to, you know, the effect of that's going to pass by, too let alone not, then now that you have the stronger dollar and the higher rates. So I don't think the Fed has a chance of raising rates four times this year. Uh, if they do it one, once or twice, I would be shocked. Now, when Trump was, um, uh, when he was campaigning, he talked about the Fed, and of course Hillary Clinton didn't like that at all. Uh, do you think Trump is going to make a move to get rid of the Fed? No, I think that's ridiculous. Like I said, he, he's, yeah. he personally is incentive to, to incentive to keep the system as it is. And uh, again, all the things that he criticized the Fed for when he was when he was in office, like, oh, it's a big, fat, ugly bubble. He was just doing it just to get people upset so that they would vote for him. But he has no incentive to do that. I mean, look, if you if you try to take down the Fed, when the Fed is the only thing that's been holding up the market, everything crashes on your dime. And like any politician, he he is going to go hell bent of trying to fix things. Uh, without having a recession. That's what politicians do and central bankers do. They try to fix things without a recession. Oh, well, things are, are this bad. Well, if I just do protectionist policies and repeal Obamacare, everything will great. Of course, all those things only make things worse. The more government you have, the, the, you know, the worse things are. And especially when you're talking about protectionism in, 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 free, in, in trade, uh, which is ironic because he's, he's repealing NAFTA, but he wants to do even more draconian things uh, you know, that, that restrict trade. So I think, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, he's going to try like everyone else that, that wants to remain in office and keep the fame, fortune and glory to prevent the inevitable. And you can't prevent a recession forever. And you can't prevent, uh, a, a parabolically growing debt from having to be repaid. You just can't. And when currencies are already crashing around the world, the economies are already crashing. When you institute, institute these kind of things, it just is going to make things worse. It's that simple. Andy, you wrote an article, and the title is The Upcoming Cataclysmic Financial Big Bang to End All Big Bangs, and then you upgraded it from inevitable to imminent. What do you mean by that? Right. Well, actually, it's, you know, it goes back to a year ago. Actually, it goes back to April 2015 when I first said a big Chinese devaluation was coming. And then 20, literally 24 hours before they did the initial devaluation in August, I wrote The Upcoming Cataclysmic financial big bank to end all big banks, saying the ultimate deflationary event, the ultimate tr trade currency war event in the world would be the Chinese devaluation we all know is coming. They have to do it. They peg themselves to the dollar. The dollar gets strong during a time of crisis. And you look at what's going on there. Their economy is crashing. So they started the process back in August of 2015. They haven't done the, when I say the cataclysmic part, I mean a big devaluation. Right now they're up to 15%. I think they're going to do a lot more. And uh, just, you know, we were early in the year when they were instituting massive capital controls and the yuan almost went below seven to the dollar, which is like this big key psychological level to the point where capital um, flight would have really accelerated. It was looking pretty much like it would happen. Now, the uh, Trump's weak dollar comments have uh, given them reprieve uh, because right now it's taking pressure off of them to devalue because the dollar has come down a little bit. But uh, but yeah, it's not going to change that they're they're collapsing historic bubble much because the dollar went from 103 to 100. It's not going to change the fact that they have the biggest bubble in history and that it's bursting. So I think uh, it is. Uh, I, and, and the way I wrote this one, I wrote uh, upgraded to imminent with a question mark because it's like I was just saying, well, look what's going on. It's starting to look like it could happen. But, you know, they, they bought a little more time. But trust me, the dollar goes up in any way, shape and form again. And we'll be right back on that doorstep of the Yuan breaking seven and the capital flight. And inevitably it has to happen because, the, again, you know, there's nothing that destroys currencies more than fixed uh, economies, more than fixing currencies. And the Chinese bubble is the biggest in history as a result of this peg, which must break. 
Now, there, there are those out there saying that we're not going to make it out of 2017 with, without a collapse, without the economy declining quite a bit. Uh, we already have the IMF out there, Christine Lagarde. She's saying, you know, because of Trump's policies and because of the Brexit, you know, they're looking at 2017 and it doesn't look that great. Yellen is already saying that the labor market, well, it doesn't look like it's growing and it's not as strong as we thought it was going to be. From what you're looking at, what do you see in 2017? Like I said, you, look, when you, the economy is now, I think it's like the third longest, quote, expansion in U.S. history, which is so ridiculous because nothing has happened. I mean, quantitatively, you look at the numbers and you go, is this even an expansion at all? And of course, you know that the numbers are, are cooked for inflation and all kinds of other things. So the fact is we're, we're in a recession right now and we have historic overcapacity. Uh, it pretty much across the board. I mean, why do you think OPEC's making this desperation deal, which isn't even a deal, and eventually it'll be called out for the lie that it is. And, uh, the, you know, the real numbers, forget the soft numbers, like the hope and expectations of these diffusion indices, the real numbers are horrible. I mean, retail and industrial production are falling, and in real terms, they're falling even more. Existing home sales, yeah, I mean, everything is, everything in real terms is going down. And, um, and uh, Trump wants to try to, uh, create some infrastructure plan, it's only going to make things worse because you're going to have a skyrocketing debt. And that's if he gets through the debt ceiling issue. Remember, the debt ceiling suspension ends on March 15th. So he's going to get have to get authorization for this massive spending plan, which everyone's going to see right through as as nothing but a, you know, a massively inflationary measure. So I just think it's just impossible. How can we get through another year without without the without even the government cook data realizing that we're in a recession. That's what I believe strongly, especially because this just this tiny move up in the dollar and interest rates has had a massively negative impact. And if Trump tries to do all these things, these inflationary things, he's going to make interest rates go up further. So when the economy like starts to really start to fall apart and people start to take notice, like usually people take notice when the stock market starts coming down, then everyone goes, oh, wait, what's happening here? How do you think Trump is going to handle this? Right. Of course, then that's the key thing. People notice when the stock market goes down. That's why they had to double and triple up their their efforts to support it uh, after the after the Trump victory, because it's not like anyone's invested in the stock market anymore. I mean, 60 percent of Americans have less than a thousand dollars of savings and everyone lost their shirt between the 2000 and 2007 and eight crises. They lost everything. So, yeah, I mean, there are some people watching, not as many people as used to be watching. But, you know, from a from a global capital perspective, if the if the stock market was ever allowed to fall uh, or, or fell on its own volition, that would ignite everything right away. I mean, the Fed would immediately uh, cut rates and talk about QE4. And uh, and it would be pretty obvious that the shock to the confidence of, of the consumer would be would be immediate. And that's why they're so desperate to hold the stock market up, which is completely artificial. But, uh, you know, the, but the real data just keeps to, to just grate down on them, you know, kind of like Chinese water torture. And the fact is, it's obviously not just here. It's everywhere. I mean, look, look at India, right? I mean, there's a billion plus people over there. Their economy has gone from, quote, a 7 percent grower to it's negative. They can say whatever they want. It's falling apart. China has just reported its lowest GDP number, which is probably should be negative also ever. And uh, I mean, look what's going on in Europe right now. You can have a bunch of the countries leaving the European Union. It's complete political chaos. Uh, most of South America is like that right now. So, you know, where, where's that? Where's the pocket of strength? Well, what's going to support the world? And, and the thing is, again, that strong dollar has caused so much damage to the world. That that uh, you know that it's almost irreversible, and you know if they do somehow manage to get the dollar to fall down again, well, good for gold. But it's going to be uh, you know we're talking about shocking volatility in financial markets. Andy, hey, I appreciate you coming on the X twenty two report spotlight. Really do. Uh, once again, how can people see your work? MilesFranklin.com. Uh, Miles Franklin has been in business now for twenty eight years without a single registered complaint. I write every day for free. You can call us at 800-822-8080 or email me at aoffman at milesfranklin.com. Andy, once again, thank you very much for being on the spotlight. No, very well. Ahead and they push Article 50 through. They vote to leave. And we know, you know, Italy, France, and the rest of the countries, like you said, it's going to break apart. I mean, isn't this going to have a ripple effect throughout, I mean, Europe and then the U.S., Canada? What are the, What's the fallout from all this? 
Uh, well, look, you know, I've said this year is going to be the year of money printing and draconian government actions and monetary revolution. The fallout is, you know, last year was last year was was the awakening. That's when we first saw the votes. We first saw that the people are going to fight back. Uh, and be, first, it was the, actually the Catalonian secession vote was the first one at the end of 2015. And then the Brexit, and the Italian referendum and the Trump uh, so, you know, it's 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 where the world is realizing the, the powers that be are realizing and the people are realizing uh, that there's a, a popular uprising which won't be quenched. And, um, you know, it's really, you know, the fallout is that the, the powers that be fight to the death and they lose. And it's kind of like, you know, you look at the market, quote, the, well, the quote market reaction to the Trump. Remember, we spent all all summer with, well, if we need if Trump wins. It's horrible for stocks and it's and it's great for gold. And. You know, because they knew Hillary was going to win, and that's how they kind of set up the rigging. And then when it, and then when it didn't happen, they kind of tried to double up their efforts. Like, wow, we really miscalculated. Okay, we got to create this Trumpflation meme, and that means that's what you know, stocks go up and gold goes down, and and everything is great. And you know, buying them a little more time, and so they could figure out their next plan. But you know, that that meme is going to die too. And uh, I think it's going to be very apparent in not so long of a period of time that there's nothing, a lot of them are misguided, like actually thinking he's going to bring manufacturing back here without uh, without causing trade and currencies wars and, of course, causing the price of, of goods for heavily indebted Americans to explode um, or, or repealing Obamacare with, and replacing with who knows what because there's really no replacement at this time unless you're just going to take all the free insurance you just gave uh, and take it all back. Uh, so, yeah, look, I mean... He is not incentivized to make any changes in, in the rigging of markets, but the pressure because of all the changes that's going on, the fact that the economy continues to inexorably decline worldwide, that these political revolutions continue to expand, uh, that currencies continue to weaken and the volatility in, in financial markets continues to increase, are only going to get are only going to become more so, especially with him in, in office. So, again, you know. He's going to try it. He's going to go all out trying to change things with with sheer will. But he's going up against economic mother nature and the unstoppable tsunami reality. What we're seeing right now, Obama just left office. Now, the economy, we've been watching it. We know that a lot of the information is manipulated. Most likely we're in a recession right now. But what's very interesting about all this is that all the companies are laying off and, you know, retail is contracting, stores are closing. And all of a sudden, you know, we hear all these companies saying, oh, we're going to create 10,000 jobs here. IBM, as they're laying off, we're going to create 25,000 jobs. Walmart, as they're, you know, saying that retail is not going well, we're going to create 10,000 jobs. GM is out there saying we're going to be building, yes, manufacturing the UK from leaving their entire regime. Oh, of course. In fact, I, I wrote about this yesterday, not just, uh, not just Draghi, who's... Pretty much, I said, you know, he let it out of the bag what they're discussing in their meetings because they know very well it's likely to happen. Uh, but also the vice chancellor, meaning the number two guy, you know, like it's the equivalent of the vice president in Germany, admitted this week that it's very possible that the uh, European Union will break up. So believe me, the powers that be know this is this is a possibility. And they certainly know after not just the Brexit, but the, the Italian referendum, which was I think it was like 65 percent to 35 percent, the Catalonian secession and the Trump vote. So they, they know the writings on the wall, but yeah, they're going to fight a tooth and nail. And I was writing this morning about the, uh, you know, this, this uh, Supreme Court of the UK blocking it and saying uh, the parliament has to vote for it. And I said that, you know, they pulled in Alexis Cyprus. Remember when last year yes. Greece voted Oxy, they said, we want no bailouts. And he said, even though you voted me in for, for just uh, to avoid the bailouts, I'm going to do it anyway. Well, I don't think the UK is anything like Greece. And I have a feeling that if, while they will try to delay it as far as possible, if they dare try to go against the will of that very proud people, I think you're going to see some real political and and uh, and probably monetary revolution in that part of the world. But yeah, of course they're going to fight it to the death. They 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 could they couldn't believe they lost the election uh, to Trump, and uh, and they, you know they'll fight in every way possible to prevent him from ending their their Game of Thrones. But eventually they're going to lose. What's the uh, fallout from all of this? So uh, let's say the UK, they get in plans. How possibly can all of this be done while the economy is in the shape that it's in? Is it possible? A lot of it is just public relations. First of all, IBM, I can't believe they said that. 
they've had they've been contracting the company for like a decade. They're a dinosaur. In fact, I think they they've had like declining revenues year over year for like what four straight years or something like that. And they, their debt has exploded, so they're definitely not. And uh, and Walmart just announced layoffs. And as for GM, they haven't announced any jobs. They just said we plan to build plants. But you know they're all saying because Trump is all over them. I mean it's just public public relations and. Frankly, it doesn't make any sense for them. I mean, he can go in there with all his bluster and say, yeah, we're going to make manufacturing. But the only way he can make manufacturing profitable is if he just prints a lot of money and gives subsidies to these companies. I mean, huge subsidies that are going to cause inflation. And even that, practically speaking, is probably not going to work. It would take years to do all that stuff. And, of course, all our competitors overseas are going to devalue their currencies and make them even more competitive uh, against us. So... Again, he has a lot of bluster, but there's nothing they can do. And, you know, there's no one really. It's like at the at the guy at Alibaba, Jack Ma. Again, this is a Chinese company. What does he care about America? He meets with Trump for, for a half an hour and comes out and says, I'm going to create 100,000 jobs. But he's not. He's just saying, yeah, I want to build Alibaba. And uh, I would like it so that people in America use it like they use eBay. Maybe some people will sell stuff on it. Like they, That's not creating jobs. It's all public relations BS. I mean, the fact is that it's something different about the Trump world as far as the outlook for the U.S. economy than there was with the Hillary world. I mean, probably would be at World War III with Hillary by now, but nothing is going to change. He's not going to be able to change anything. And as a result, you know, this this last-ditch effort to prevent the popular realization that nothing has changed is, is going to die on the vine, just like all of their other attempts uh, to change reality with rigged markets. So you mentioned Trump, and Trump is out there doing many different things right off the bat here. And do you do you think we're going to see a lot of truth bombs? Like, do you think we're going to start seeing real statistical information coming from the government, like unemployment, GDP? Do you think the rigging of the stock market's going to stop? Do you think the precious metals rigging is going to stop under Trump? Do you think any of that's going to happen? No, I don't think, well, the rigging the precious metals market is going to end when so when demand overcomes supply, it'll, I mean, it'll never end. There's no, there's no administration that's going to be like, yeah, let's let the, let's let the true nature of um, reality come in, which would be, you know, re, um, actual economic data showing a recession and actual stock markets collapsing and and the bond vigilantes coming in and people buying gold because that's that's what will happen if they stop for for a second. And uh, Trump will Trump uh, on a personal basis is his leverage to this system with all his high end leverage real estate as anyone out there. So there's, he has, I mean, look at who he's appointed, all these Goldman Sachs people and billionaires. So no, he, there, he has no incentive to, to drain the swamp. He, in fact, he hasn't done any of that. He's, he definitely has some free market principles, which I appreciate, although I 